At 17 years old on Christmas Eve in 1971, okay. Julianne boarded Lanza Flight 508 from Lima to Pucallpa, Peru with her mother and 90 Fly. other passengers. Only Niggas 25 back like, minutes into the flight? Niggas back like, do not have full damage. You ain't a cat, nigga. The plane began to violently shake as it entered a thunderstorm. Looking out the window in horror, Julianne saw a bolt of lightning strike the wing of the plane. Chaos quickly erupted as the plane... Nigga, what the fuck? Nigga, this scene was not breaking. Stop. ...he began tearing apart. Julianne, who was still buckled to her seat, was... Bitch, what the fuck? Yo, <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing in the air? <laughs> what the fuck? Med kids, bro. <laughs> bro, that was crazy. The guy like he's in spectator mode. What the fuck? Ripped from the plane. She fell 10,000 feet through the sky into the dense Amazon jungle below. She remained strapped to a row of seats, which actually acted as a makeshift parachute and landed perfectly among. Nigga. Ain't no way. Imagine actually living to tell the tale that like, actually this happened. It's the high canopy of the jungle softening the crash. Concussed and rightfully traumatized by the disaster, Julian. Rightfully traumatized. The bro got shut down. <gasps> <gasps> nigga, but like, but like, no, no, no. Real talk, real talk. What are you supposed to do after that? You just, bro, you just, nigga, you fall? Nigga. Oh, shit. Fucking hell, mate. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. That was a bit full. Fucking hell, mate. Hey, that was a big fall. Fucking hell, mate. I'm good, me, mate. Fucking hell, mate. Is that lotion on your bed? Nah, no, I don't know what you're talking about. What lotion? What are you saying? What do you mean, lotion? What are you talking about? She found the reboot van. She right? <laughs> Yo, nigga had a tour of and dying in that bitch. She was good. I swear to God, bro. She be bugging her. I ain't gonna lie. Like, what would she tell her friends? Like, nigga, I fell out of a fucking plane. I was good. I think her teammates revived her after a while. You reckon, innit? <laughs> Took her ass to the reboot van. Julianne laid motionless on the jungle floor for an entire day. When she came to, she was alone in the rainforest, having only sustained a broken collarbone, a sprained knee, Damn. gashes on her right shoulder and left calf. Julianne rose to her feet, found a bag of candy from the rubble. Is this fucking Minecraft? Wait, hold on. Hold on. Is this actually like real or is this like satire? And proceeded to hike for 11 days. 11 days with a bag of candy in her hands. Yeah, this is this is lovely, mate. Days until she was found by two loggers. Today, she is known as Dr. Julianne Diller, a prominent zoologist it's who actually traveled real. the world, advancing the study of animal science and working in the same Peruvian jungle where she survived. So if there's anything in you should no take way. away from this story, it's this. Wear your seatbelt. Nigga. Oh, yeah, yeah. Real, bro, real talk. You wear your seatbelt and you die. Teammates came clutch. My CV be like, bro, do you know what crazy? My see, I'll see if you be like this shit and employers still won't take you. I fell out of fucking plane and I survived. Oh yeah, mate, that's amazing, mate. But we still won't have you for the job. Fuck off. Phineas Gage had a 13 pound metal pole blasted through his skull and survived. I right, listen, real quick, real quick, join the Discord and we stream on Twitch every single day. Well, maybe. Oh, anyways, quick, quick, join. <laughs> Yo, this. He's blowing my mind. <laughs> He's blowing my mind. Hold on. I want to I wanna see. I want to I wanna, I wanna see how this works. In 1848, then 24-year-old Phineas Gage was working on a new railroad track in Vermont. His job was simple. Literally just blow up rocks. One day after placing a charge in a hole, he began... These are real stories, by the way. ...packing sand with a tamping iron. Mm. When suddenly the iron caught something in the sand, probably a rock or a small piece of metal, and created a spark. This tripped oh. the charge and caused a massive explosion with Gage standing directly on top of that blast. What Jeez. happened next has been studied by doctors, myself included, for the last 150 years. The blast rocketed the iron bar upward, penetrating behind his left eye, entering his brain, and then exiting through the top of his skull, finally landing a full 80 feet away. When his fellow rail workers rushed over, they were immediately devastated and shocked to see he was still alive despite a nearly two inch hole through his entire skull. Not Nigga, what the f bro? Where did the fucking pole go then? Like, I don't get it. How? This is why, bro, this is why Yahoo is real, bro. This is why God is real, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Knowing how to help in this dire situation, the workers rushed him to a nearby doctor who was most definitely unprepared for such a gruesome injury. Nigga. Despite some initial convulsions, Gage never even lost consciousness. And in one of the most miraculous medical cases ever recorded, he survived for 12 years. Yeah, he probably didn't live that long. That's what I was thinking. Bro, I actually have no idea. I actually have no, bro, like that's, bro, yeah.
Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, like, but you actually live quite a long time. Bro, that is crazy. And over 12 years. But with one major caveat. You yeah. see, Gage is also considered a vital piece of medical history as he led us to start believing the brain was actually responsible for controlling personality. While Gage did survive the explosion, uh -huh. it's documented that damage to his frontal lobe led his personality to go through some major changes. Mm. Dr. Harlow, who treated Gage following the accident, said he is fitful, irreverent, indulging at times in the grossest profanity, which was not previously his custom. Some who knew him have claimed it took him years years to regain his personality. Reports Whoa, over exactly how damage. much his personality changed have been the cause of much debate it is. It's over actually the years, interesting. but regardless, surviving a metal pole flying through your skull- I mean, but let's be real, bro. Metal pole through your fucking head. You're not gonna be the same, are you? You're not gonna stand up and be like, dust yourself. I'm saying dust yourself off. Oh yeah, mate, I'm right, mate. It's nothing short of a miracle. That is insane. Aaron Ralston cut off that his own insane. arm after being trapped by a boulder for a hundred how can you not get stroke from that? Bro, that's God, bro. I'm telling you, bro. God is real, bro. But, like, the thing is, at the end of the day, uh, the thing is, at the end of the day, bro, like, yeah, I don't, yeah, he didn't live, he didn't live too late. He lived actually quite long, though, but he didn't live, he didn't, he didn't end up living, like, super, super long. Like, 12 years, that's quite a long time. But, probably would have just shut down after that. That's insane, though, to think he lived for that long, despite the fact that shit shot through his brain. 127 hours and survived and got a movie made about him. Oh. While hiking alone in Utah, Aaron crash landed into a canyon and had his right arm pinned against a wall by an 800 pound boulder. Yeah, you're not getting that, 800 pound. 800 pound. Bro. It's about one fifth as a car. I cheats. welcome to the fucking tree. Just think about how, like a fifth of a car being on your fucking hand. Disgusting. Aaron Ralston cut off his own arm after being trapped. Disgusting. And had his right arm pinned against the wall by an 800 pound boulder. Strategizing with few good options, he decided to wait and scream for help. Slowly drinking his limited water and eating his two burritos and chocolate bars. Oh Unfortunately, God. as the days passed and nobody came. 127 hours. Hold on, let me deep that. 127 hours in days. Five whole fucking days. We're talking about a whole 24 hour cycle. Bro, the shoulder, boulder, the boulder weighs the same as miracle. Bro, I'm not okay, so bro. <laughs> but look, look, look. <clears throat> the fucking days go by 24 hours. Bro, the main reason he survived is because of his mentality, bro. I'll be real. Began to get desperate. Drinking water turned to drinking urine, and eating oh. his burritos turned to eating nothing. With no help on the way, Aaron Drinking. had to rely on only himself and take what are we watching? People who somehow head. survive freak accidents. He took out the dusty, dull blade in his multi tool and began making his way through his own arm. The pain oh. was excruciating, but the pain quickly turned to panic as he realized his dull blade would never be able to get through the bones in his arm. That's when he realized he missed the primitive tool at his disposal. The oh. boulder itself could be his way out. Through sheer force of will and a rage that only comes after drinking your own pee for several days, Fuck. Aaron used the leverage of the boulder to twist and break oh. both the radius and ulna bones in oh. his forearm. After withering away in a cave for 120 seven hours aaron had removed confessions when after this shit. after this after this video after this video higher arm created a makeshift tourniquet and freed himself from his natural prison allowing him to stumble out of the canyon where he was discovered by hikers aaron survived and today continues to oh travel the God. world where he not only speaks about his harrowing journey but also navigates rivers climbs mountains and hikes canyons Nigga said grow a brack. <laughs> let's pray after this video. You're right, bro. We'll pray. Actually, no matter of fact, fuck it. Let's pray now. <sighs> God, I want to thank you for another day. I want to thank you for life. We want to thank you for keeping us all safe. We want to thank you for keeping all our limbs intact. We want to thank you for the ability to walk, to be able to, the ability to use both of our hands and all our fingers and all our nails and all our eyebrows and eyelashes and everything. Everything, every piece of thing you've given us. And I want to thank you for that. Uh, and uh, I pray that we continue to have those things and we do not lose any parts of our bodies and we continue to thrive and live hale and healthy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yo. Dr. Leonid Rogozov performed an emergency appendectomy on I mean, himself I mean. and survived in the middle of the 20th century. People say Amin because like different languages, etc. Amin. But Amen. Amin. Same. Who the fuck is doing? What? Nigga, just don't behind me. What are you talking about?
Okay, Russia began. Okay, wait, what was the next one? What was the next one? An emergency appendectomy on himself. And append Yo, do you know your appendix? Appendix, bro. Do you know how, bro? Do you know how excruciating fucking, how, bro? To get your appendix, bro. Oh my fucking god. Or, century, or wherever Russia people began aggressively exploring and conducting research in Antarctica. And in 1960, sent an expedition this, we'll to construct it. a base known as Novolovarskaya. Mm. The team completed its construction in nine weeks and then had to wait out the winter until the ice thawed so they could be brought back home. Because the team was effectively stranded at the base, they brought along the doctor to ensure the crew could be treated for any illnesses or injuries if they were to arise. Okay. Tragically, Dr. Rogozov was the one sick after suffering several hours of unrelenting abdominal pain weakness and nausea dr rogozov diagnosed himself with appendicitis oh. or inflammation of the appendix that can cause severe pain and yes. even death if left untreated but that knowing that there were so no much. surgeons around he reached for all possible conservative methods to address his situation but unfortunately for the doctor None of them were effective, leaving him with only one final choice. Jesus Christ. Surgical removal of his appendix, performed by himself, on himself? He recruited two medical assistants, Bro. the team meteorologist and the team driver, to hold open the abdominal incision and hold a mirror to better visualize his surgical field. Jesus Seated Christ. upright in a Please hospital. Please tell me you had anesthesia. Please tell me you had anesthesia. Please tell me you had anesthesia. Please. Taking as many sterilization precautions as possible, Dr. Rogozov began the operation. The pain and fatigue was excruciating, causing oh him to God. experience vertigo and take several pauses with his abdomen wide open. Nevertheless, he continued. He removed the perforated appendix and stitched himself back up over the course of just two hours. Two After hours. After four days, Dr. Rogozov's bowel function returned to normal. After five days, his fever was gone. After eight... Oh, fuck, bro. My stomach, bro. My fucking stomach, bro. Like, I actually feel... Like, I'm actually feeling, like, sick. Like, I feel like... Uh... I feel like it's hot. Oh my god, bro. That's that's days his stitches were removed. And after two weeks, he was back to performing heavy work on the base. What a champ. In it. That's real nigga shit right there. Real nigga shit right there. Michael Cassidy was split in half by a fire hydrant during a motorcycle crash and survived. The 25-year-old Next thing we're gonna hear, someone only had a neck. <laughs> they only had a neck. Like, I'm not trying to violate, but like, the way I'm hearing this shit sounds insane. Niggas, niggas whole body was gone. He only had his neck. ...was riding his motorcycle down the street when he no, no, unexpectedly no, lost control of his back. So he was the real miracle. <laughs> okay, buddy, I'll give you that one. 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 At that moment, Michael knew he was going to crash. So in a split-second decision to mitigate damage, he veered in between two cars in the hopes of finding some grass. Unfortunately, Michael didn't see the fire hydrant hidden between the cars. Oh. His body flew full speed through the air, directly into the hydrant. When he came to, he was lying face down, but his legs were face up. The hydrant oh. had essentially split his pelvis in two, known as an open book fracture. This is essentially a death sentence in most scenarios. Fortunately, two off-duty nurses witnessed the brutal crash, immediately rushing to his aid and summoning an emergency helicopter to get him to the nearest trauma center. Upon his arrival, doctors placed a special balloon catheter inside his femoral artery and slid it up near his aorta. Once inflated, this blocked blood flow to his lower half, reducing further blood loss and finally allowing doctors to get a good view of the oh, damaged pelvis. That's it pretty worked. good. Multiple I, 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 go like, I just said, thank God, bro. Thank God, bro. I can't go for life. Like, I can't stomach this properly. Mercs, you acting like you ain't heard worse. What have I heard worse than this? Than these niggas dying like this? What have, what have I heard? What have I heard worse than this? Collaborated to repair his ruptured bladder, reconnect blood vessels, and reconstruct his entire pelvis. To be honest, I'll just stay in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I'll just stick to fucking Minecraft and breaking my legs there, bro. I'll just stick to that shit. Hardware and screws. Take a full damage After a Fortnite. month of physical therapy, Michael now walks with a limp, passes waist through an ostomy bag, and he oh, and his shit. wife just welcomed their first child. Without a balloon catheter to slow the blood loss and a ton. You probably haven't seen gore. I've seen gore, but hearing these stories is just insane. Damn. Okay, he's got a little family going on. I should. Right. Ton of blood transfusions. Michael wouldn't have made it. Receiving a transfusion can mean the difference between life and death. Bro had kids before, Mark's nigga. I'm fucking nigga. I'm nigga. I'm 18, nigga. Fuck what I have kids now for. <laughs> Oh, 
Hey, you man, make sure you guys fucking follow the fucking Instagram. You get what I'm saying? Follow that shit, bro. So you man can stay updated and you guys can hear when I'm streaming or upload a new video. Just fucking follow. What's wrong with you, bro? Pan up.